Let me try and address a question um, that is often asked to most men, and that is the question that why doesn't um, why doesn't the man in my life listen, or why doesn't he react favorably to what I say? And this might not apply in your particular circumstance, but this is a generic um, example about why we often might seem as though we're distracted. Most men, most men have an attention span of a fish. And that is no compliment. Uh, most men are easily distracted but also we're easily bored and by bored I don't mean in terms of we want something crazy to happen we're, we're easily bored because we haven't been trained um, about the importance of focus and staying um, focused on one particular thing so in a, in a strange way our mind wanders around so frequently and and in every relationship I say to my friends and I would say to you as well if you're a lady listening to this that you have to find a way to entertain him that entertainment is not physical entertainment although that might be necessary and that should be on the table but it's less about physical entertainment because men are more intrigued. Men are more um, attracted to the right words. A woman who has the right words, a woman who can converse, a woman who can talk, a woman who can study a man's environment and change his states, not by doing anything sexual, not by doing anything physical, but just by using the right words, by asking the right questions. I think a woman who can do any, all of that will always, will always be able to influence a man. Now, understand something, I didn't say control because that's not what we're trying to achieve. It's influence. Any woman who can ask the right questions has made it, she's got it made. Because there is a power in questions whatever question you ask can control your focus and wherever focus goes energy flows and through the right words asking the right questions conversations can be um, can be birth through the right words communication can get better through the right words you can create an atmosphere where you have almost what I will call a mentor and a mentee relationship because in every relationship, both parties at some some point in time will play that role. One is a mentor, one is a mentee. Now you might be thinking, well, what can he teach me? Or what can she teach me? Well, they can teach you about themselves. And no one knows you better than you know yourself. So anyone in my in my company who wants to know about me becomes my protege, becomes a mentee because I'm teaching them something I know about me and no one knows me better than I know myself. Similarly, if I was in the presence of someone else who um, I wanted to get to know a little bit more about, I become a mentee or a protege and they become a mentor. So that relationship will always exist. The best relationships are those who, or, or rather are those where um, the lady and the man understand the value in that. Now, you've got to understand the protege-mentor relationship to see how best to forge almost an unbreakable bond. The quality of every relationship between a protege and a mentor has to do with the, the passion, the passion that the mentee or the protege has for seeking counsel the passion for asking questions, the passion for finding the right answers, the passion to be taught, the willingness to listen, the desire to know more, the desire to please. Now, all of these are very simple, but very important um, 
you might even call it um, markers that would indicate how well that relationship will, will do and the reason is simply because in most cases a mentor's responsibility is not to chase the mentee down or the protege and try to teach them it should be the opposite it should be the other way around where if you want to learn something you have to find people who've achieved um, success in an area where you're trying to learn about and I've done this in so many areas of my life and there have been some people who have wanted to be my mentors and I've, I've gone after them for years and I've had to court them and, and show them my desire my passion my patience and the longer you show that the more the mentor sees that you are really genuinely interested and then they will open up and share everything that they can with you bringing this back to a, the intimacy relationship um, scenario every intimate relationship is in the same way one person has to teach the other has to listen whilst the other person is listening they have to understand they have to be receptive they have to be patient now the biggest challenge that normally happens this is the biggest challenge and I'll say this um, and I, I don't say this particularly because I'm siding one party I'm only teaching from the point of view that I'm a man and I can only talk about what I know I've never experienced what it would feel like to be a woman um, and so I cannot speak from a lady's point of view particularly but I know that the principles apply both ways but the biggest challenge that I've found is in in um, in any relationship it's where a mentor is trying to teach and the protege, protege or the mentee thinks that there's a different way if you ever have that arrangement or situation then you will have a, a crack in the relationship because the mentor becomes discouraged about wasting his or her time teaching someone who refuses to listen that is almost the picture of most relationships most intimate relationships and I'll use I'll use myself as a good example let me use myself as a reference point let's assume that I'm dating someone and let's assume that the person I'm dating is perhaps um, in her late 20s this is just an example no judgment just using an example let's assume the person is in her late 20s and let's say particularly the person is 28 now let's also assume in this case that I'm the same age as that person what that means is that the person has had the lady has had 28 years of knowing herself of knowing what she likes of knowing what she doesn't like of knowing what pleases her and what displeases her now she's met me so she knows herself very well on the other hand I know about women based on my experience of spending time with other women all of which or most of which were not this particular lady now the worst mistake I can make is to use the assumptions that I've acquired over my 28 year period and use my experiences from my 28 year period as though it's the truth about who she is that's one of the biggest mistakes most people make rather than coming in from a, a protege or a mentee's point of view and holding on to your knowledge but also recognizing that that knowledge may not be applicable in this particular scenario most people go into relationships and they try to make the other person who is teaching feel like there's something wrong with them and I think that destroys most relationships so I would say that whatever you you know wherever you might be in your relationship if you can develop the, the, the attitude if you can develop the 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 discipline the habits the, the desire and the, the passion to be taught I think you can make your relationship the best relationship ever now to do that it's not just about sitting there quietly 
and listening. No, you have to ask the right questions because all of life's secrets, all of the secrets of life are hidden in questions. As soon as you ask the right question, it, it activates a chain of events where the answers start to come out. Some, and some questions will be unintelligent questions, but that's okay, you have to start somewhere. And the more you ask questions and the more you focus on improving, the better you become good at asking questions. Now this is, this is what I find quite fascinating is um, um, a reference to how to get anything you want in life. And it says, to get anything you want in life, you simply have to ask. A-S-K, three letter words. But the, the ancient storyteller says, ask and you will find. Seek and you, no rather, ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened up to you. For anyone who asks, receives. He who seeks, will find. And he who knocks, the door will be opened up to the person. What that statement is talking about is literally what I believe is a, a wisdom key to living well and living effectively. And that is simply that the three letter word ASK demonstrates your passion, your burning desire, your willingness to learn, your willingness to listen. And it's simply saying that you have to ask, be willing to ask, but although it doesn't specifically say it, I believe the storyteller was saying, number one, you have to ask intelligently. Number two, you have to ask the right source, you know, ask the right person. And this is, let me deal with that slightly. And I can feel myself, you know, moving around and I've moved away from what I started talking about initially, but I, I have a stirring in my heart and I will just go with the flow. One of the biggest problems in most relationships, this is it, irrespective of what side of the table you find yourself, is most people are asking, number one, they're not asking intelligently. And even what's worse is they're not asking the right person. So most people will go and ask uh, Cosmopolitan magazine. They might go and ask um, even myself, you know, if you're listening to this and you're, you're having a relationship problem, um, a lot of what I'm dealing with here are questions that I've received and people are asking me questions, so I'm trying to respond. But I don't even know your partner. I don't know the person in that relationship or the second parts of that relationship to be able to give an opinion. So I'm, I'm, I'm given a subjective view. A lot of people ask the wrong um, person. They ask their friends. They ask their parents. All along, the person who has all the answers is sitting right there. And if you could just humble yourself and go and ask the person, you get the answers. So we spend a lifetime, you know, searching for answers and asking the wrong people. And therefore, we don't actually get to experience life and the joy that should come from a relationship because we're, we're, we're dealing with a wrong way of asking. So I think if you're willing to ask the right questions, if you're willing to discipline yourself, to see yourself as someone who wants to study the other person and who wants to do that because you have a, a maybe a, a desire to please the other person and see that as a see that as a an honourable experience. If you can if you can discipline yourself, I think that you can make your relationship the best um, the best that it can be. You can develop your relationship into become the best that it can be. Ask the right questions, ask intelligently, ask the right person, and choose the timing of when you ask. And I think the answers will come to you very easily.